morning again. Hope you're enjoying brunch. I want to again thank all of you for coming. I want to thank our university relations staff and all those that have worked so hard at Excel in getting this brunch together. I want to thank Mark Vickers, who's organized it. Doreen, for all the work she's done welcoming people. Thank you all. We're glad you're here. I want to present a few words of welcome from some people, beginning with our university president, Neil Salonen. Thank you, and I would just underscore the same thing. We're very proud of the history of the university, and we're excited about the future. So we're hoping in the time that you're here, you'll get a chance to sense that we're trying to build on everything that's been great about the city and the university. Some of it's appearing already, some of it could use a little nudge. So any suggestions you have uh, would be good to hear. We're especially privileged to honor our, our guest of uh, our guest of honor today, and in order to recognize that, uh, the city of Bridgeport, who has been a very close partner with the university in terms of working on a lot of redevelopment activity, uh, represented by the president of the city council, uh, would like to uh, stand up and offer a proclamation to, uh, to him. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. I'm the council president. And as the council president, one of my roles, and one of my favorite roles, actually, is uh, I get to be fake mayor sometimes. Uh, so when the mayor's out of town, I become the mayor for, for a short period of time. And so uh, the mayor's out of town, and he personally called me to ask me to, um, to come for this event because you know, he's a UB alum, but also you know, UB means an awful lot to the mayor, to the council, but also to the city of Bridgeport. I, I say often, I'm not sure where the south end of the city of Bridgeport would be without the sustaining impact of this great university. So let's say a thank you to, uh, to Neil for, and for everyone here for all your efforts in maintaining this great organization down here at the uh, south end. I also love this exact room because um, this is where years ago, and I don't know why we don't do it, I, I, I was talking to Jeff and said we should probably do this again. The council used to do our budget meetings on occasion in this room, and we would do it because our budget meetings would we do in a uh, in a windowless room for day after day after day, week after week. And every once in a while, you have to take a step out and look at the most beautiful view in the city of Bridgeport to kind of remind yourself of why we do what we do. Um, there is no more beautiful place uh, in my mind than the city of Bridgeport. Um, take a look out these windows and understand that what a great great community this is. Um, and I'm excited to be here to recognize uh, one of, one of the, um, the great legacy makers here at the University of Bridgeport. Um, Professor uh, Neil Slater, as, as we all know, um, has been one of the, the, the shining lights to make sure that people understand what that true American art form of jazz means to our country, to our culture, and a lot of that started right here. He started a lot of what the great music group is here in, and study is here in the University of Bridgeport, right here in Bridgeport. And we couldn't be any prouder of that, of you being, you being a spark to light a fire uh, of this American art form here in Bridgeport, going to Texas and continuing that on, and then coming back to take a victory lap, kind of, <laughs> which I think is fantastic. And I have a proclamation from the mayor of the city of Bridgeport. Whereas Neil Slater <coughs> devoted eight decades of his life to the study, performance, and teaching of the music genre that is jazz, Grammy-nominated composer, arranger, and educator. And whereas Neil Slater is still going strong, his latest endeavor includes playing keyboard in a group called the Jazzmeisters, which features live performances at a place called Barley and Board, an upscale group pub restaurant in a historic downtown square in Denton, Texas. And whereas Dr. Slater received his Bachelor of Science from Mansfield State College, in 1952, and his Master of Arts from Duquesne University in 1954, he later went on to postgraduate studies at Columbia University for a time. Whereas he performed extensively and taught music in New York City area public schools. In New York, he also composed and played jingles for television and performed with many of New York's renowned musicians. He was employed by Warner Brothers and MCA Music as a composer, arranger, and consultant. And whereas at the University of Bridgeport, Slater founded master's and bachelor's degree programs in jazz studies in the early 1970s. This was one of the first such programs in the nation. 
At that time, he also recruited adjunct faculty who were internationally renowned performers, including Clark Terry, Sal Salvador, and Bill Finnegan, who played with the likes of Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey, and Stan Kenton. The program Slater built at UB launched many substantial careers in jazz performance. Notable alumni include guitarist Tony Perone and drummers Dave Weckl and Todd Strait. And whereas in 1981, Slater relocated to the University of North Texas, which was perhaps the premier jazz program in the country. Under Slater's direction, UNT developed a mass, Master of Music Jazz Studies degree. U.S. News and World Report, Report called this program the number one in the nation. And whereas perhaps one of Slater's greatest achievements his treatments was his work with the internationally acclaimed One O'Clock Lab Band at the University of North Texas. During his 27 years there, he served as director of the band and chair of the Jazz Studies Division from 1981 through his retirement in 2008. And whereas numerous awards have been bestowed on Slater for his musical accomplishments, while at UNT, Slater was bestowed with the President's Award, an Honorary Alumnus Award, he was recipient of the National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship Grant and the Standard Award for the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, which he received for a number of years. He also received a congressional citation for an outstanding career. Now, therefore, I, Joseph P. Gannon, Mayor of the City of Bridgeport, Connecticut, with all its citizens and visitors, do hereby proclaim October 16, 2016, as Professor Neil Slater Day in the great city of Bridgeport. Congratulations. <laughs> Professor Jeffrey Johnson came to the University of Bridgeport as director of the music program. Since that time, students have benefited from his erudition, humor, and care for students. We're very fortunate that in the past year, Dr. Johnson has stepped up to become the assistant provost of the university, where his skills are now benefiting the entire undergraduate student body. Please welcome Jeffrey Johnson. I'm honored and thrilled to have the chance to welcome all of you. I have to be careful because you know professors need to talk for one hour. And um, so I have to be careful I don't get fully on track. You know how that is. Um, today we're honoring uh, the legacy of Neil Slater. All of you being here helps to make that concrete for us. We know about his work here. His work still carries on. It still resonates. You know the greatest thing about music is that when you sound a note, other notes that are available ring, and that ringing is what's still going on. This was a program that showed us how to be innovative at this school, and we learned that from people like Neil Slater. Uh, now, all programs across the country have figured out how to integrate jazz into a traditional Bachelor of Music program. University of Bridgeport was ahead of that. We helped pioneer that. We helped figure it all out, and we're still figuring out how to make innovative things work for our current student population. They are every bit as unique as you were when you were their age. You remember what you were like, right? I mean, you wouldn't have fit into the traditional machine. You wouldn't have. And you fit in here because we at the University of Bridgeport gave you a chance to open out the potential that you had. And we're still doing that for the students that are here today. Um, as someone who has cared so deeply about teaching, I can say that there is nothing that warms us the way it does when we look around and see people like yourselves who benefited and honored that teaching and are still putting it into practice today. There's no deeper honor than that. And that's the honor that we represent here today to Neil Slater. And I just want to remark on, on how beautiful you look. It's amazing, right? It's true, right? Isn't that true? <laughs> Thanks for coming. None of this day would be possible without Mark Vickers, alumnus and adjunct faculty member who has 
reached out to Professor Slater, reached out to so many of you and gotten you here today. I'm going to turn it over to Mark Vickers. Okay, good morning. I'd like to say... Uh, Okay, there I am. Good morning. Uh, I just want to start out today by first welcoming all these different people. We have our officials here from the city, uh, the president of the university, of course, Neil and Andre Andrea, uh, our present faculty who you just have met now that I've had the opportunity to work with here the last two years. Um, I'd like to welcome, of course, our former faculty as well that we have here today, Bob Preston and Howard Zwickler. Uh, of course, all of you alumni, we're so happy to see some of you I haven't seen in a very long time. And I'd also like to welcome all the extra guests that are here today with us. Uh, I'd like to extend my thanks, if I could, uh, to Jeff and Frank. Uh, it was my idea to come up with having some kind of reunion thing, and, and they have done so much to work with me and pull a lot of people in with this so we could make all this happen uh, the way it's being done with here today so successfully. Um, I'd also like to say uh, Kyle Buckley, who I know she's been introduced. She's over here. Um, she's one that helped us put the program together and does a lot of stuff around here for all of us uh, to make things run smoothly. I'd like to thank the Alumni Association, in particular Kelly Campion Sokol, who I've been meeting with over the last couple of year, weeks and doing a lot of emailing with and trying to come up with our final uh, details. Uh, George Estrada, who is uh, an official here at the university, uh, who also helped us put this day together. And, uh, of course, all the additional players that are here today that came along. I see a couple of them out here that are present students that are going to help us this afternoon. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Doreen Gatano, Erdo, our faculty liaison. It was her job to try to reach out to all the different faculty and get, see who we could get here today. And there's a couple familiar faces as we remember them. I'm sure from years ago, Bob Preston, we see on one side, and, and Howard Zwickler on the other side, we're here today. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> it kind of struck me, I thought about Linda, which picture should she be in there? <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I'd just like to take a moment, not only these two faculty, but of course we should remember all the great faculty that we had, besides the three presently here in the room today. Uh, Dr. Vellante, of course, and I could go through a whole list, I'm sure I'll forget a lot of them. Um, but we remember Dr. Barnett, we remember uh, Terry Grenewalt, uh, uh, Dr. Sauerwein, um, I could go on and on. My flu teacher, Ken Fears, uh, was very special to me. And a lot of these faculty were so good at connecting with us and really making us feel like a big family here. And that's the one thing I always said, and it's just um, such a nice thing that when we were here, no matter if you were a jazz guy, if you were a if you were a vocalist and you were singing with Bob Regan, another name I should mention, um, you know, we all were kind of, it was a very cohesive department and uh, great, it's such a pleasure to be here. So, we're, how did we arrive here today? And I thought I'd let us have a laugh on me. In case you forgot what I looked like, that's me at the top in 1975 as a, uh, and a, a freshman here at the university and here's me today now as an adjunct faculty. So. Just to give my little story, because I want to make sure Neil understands my connection, because I'm sure people were saying, you know, he was never the A band, he wasn't one of the big jazz guys, he doesn't play New York or anything like that, and like, why, did, why was this so special to me? Well, I just want to go through, first a little bit, when I came to the university, it was because it was a student by the name of Alan Becker, and I don't know if you know, remembers him, but he was a saxophonist at the time that I played with in a little rock band, and he said, you really should come to UB, there's a lot of great jazz things going on, and I think you'd really enjoy it. So I said, okay. So my first year with Neil was, you better learn this book. <laughs> and as he pulled it out and said, we're going to do all these different arrangements and so on. And, 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 and yes. So there's my book for jazz techniques. That was my first tune, I think, was Fred Freeloader. He introduced us to a little blues and said, uh, I'm going to start with that. Okay, so my next uh, meeting with, with Neil came in my sophomore year. And as you can see, he wrote me a lot of really nice, it's hard to see them, but a lot of nice uh, comments. And I had him from my sophomore year of, of theory training. Um, 
He brought us through, of course, the famous Ely Sigmeister. Uh, that we all went through. I'm sure it's a nightmare for many. And on top of that, we also, in our class, went through the 20th century harmony with Vincent Persichetti. And uh, learned a lot about those people. So, I mean, and the other thing I just want to mention is like, I went on to do my doctoral degree at Harvard. When I say I was here from this time, they can't tell me, like, I, everybody beams. They said you were there at such an incredible time. Because I said, yeah, I've had Vincent Persichetti. We had him here as a guest composer. We had Aaron Copeland as a guest composer. We had Ely Sigmeister. We had Woody Herman, which is always one of my favorite stories to tell by Brush with Greatness is when uh, we were playing on stage for the Woody Herman band in a clinic, and I was really concentrating, making sure I played the piano parts, watching my music, and I kind of saw this figure come up on my left. Got done with the chart, and I looked up, and here's Woody Herman, like two feet away, staring at me and said, you play pretty good, kid, when you walk away. <laughs> but, you know, this is Neil providing that kind of experience to bring those people in, as he did with many, many great artists for us to work with. But that was my sophomore year, and you can see I got an A, and he said, you, you, got, you get a lot of A's, Mark, but you really need to work a little harder. So Neil really uh, made us feel like we were doing well, but always pushed us to that little extra bit. Uh, next time I had him, jazz arranging. As you can see, that's a sheet from my very first arrangement that I did in Neil's class. And of course, we all had to go through this book, which was Sounds and Scores by Henry Mancini. Yeah. Came complete with the 45 record, which is in the jacket here. They, they played all the different examples of what things would sound like. So it was uh, a great experience where, where, where I got to learn a lot about jazz arranging. Um, I did not a lot after that. I did one chart. It was a vocal chart that we just performed last year, actually. Uh, for my high school jazz band, and so they keep saying to me, you really should do more of that, and when time permits, perhaps. Uh, I like the next move. So that was my experience. I did, uh, my senior year, I moved on. I wanted to be a teacher. I was gonna be, and I ended up with a 35 year career in, in education. And uh, the jazz thing, very important to me because I started a jazz program at my last high school where I was for 28 years. They never had jazz there. And uh, so that legacy lived on a little bit through me and what I did. But I want to go from here to some best wishes of people that were, that were uh, unable to come today and had just sent me a quick note and said, could you please give my best regards, um, if I can see them all here, uh, Joel Ocasio, who we remember as one of the jazz pianists, I think Neil has seen him on and off throughout the years, another jazz pianist, Joe Che, uh, Jay Nakowitz was the trumpet player, was supposed to come today, unfortunately his mother was ill, so he was on, he's down in Florida right now. Uh, Joan Littner, we all remember Chellis, uh, Candace, who was unable to make it today, wanted to send her best wishes. Uh, Laura Sarawine, Arthur Bellucci, Mark Carlotta, guitar player, Scott Weaver, drummer, Tina LaRusso, uh, Cindy Shikoski, Peterson, Zach Peterson, bass player here, John McNord, who was a flutist uh, with me when I first started here, Tom Lovenhorst, who really wishes he could be here, and Noreen Gray Leinhardt, who I'm not sure who it is, but she just contacted me and said, would you please reach out to Neil for me? Piano player? Okay. So those, those were those people. Um, and then I had some people on top of that that wanted to go a little step further. So let me get to uh, a little bit from that. These people actually sent me, uh, sent me some uh, words to say, so I'm gonna read them they would like to have right here today. I don't know if we all remember Ben Armitano, short Italian guy, keyboard player. <laughs> and I have to say, he's been a lifelong friend of me. Somebody just said to me this morning, do you talk to Ben? I just talked to him yesterday, and that's why he wanted to send my regards. And he lives on Los Angeles. He's been there for over 20 years, working as a pianist and teaching privately in piano. And makes his trips out to Connecticut periodically, and I always make sure to point to, to see him when he's here. Uh, but here, here's what he had to say. Hi, Neil. My name is Ben Armitano. I doubt you remember me, but I was one of your arranging students, and I played piano in the B Jazz Band. Congratulations on being honored this weekend at UB. You completely deserve it. I learned so much from you. One thing I still remember to this day was one time when I had written an arrangement with Stevie Wonders for once in my life. You had the band play it at a rehearsal. As I was listening to it being played back, I heard a couple of wrong notes being played. I was praying that it was a mistake the musicians were playing, but after going over the suspicious measures and the wrong notes being played again and again, it became apparent that the mistakes weren't being made by the musicians. The wrong notes were the result of what I had written. 
and you took me to task in front of the whole band, <laughs> telling everyone that time is money in the recording studio, and if the session has to be stopped because of the arranger's written mistakes, then you won't be a professional arranger for long. And to this very day, your words have stayed with me, and even now, whenever I'm writing parts off for the musicians to play, I'm extremely careful to make sure that I haven't written any wrong notes that will hold up a rehearsal or a recording session. So thank you very much for everything you have taught me about arranging and piano playing, and enjoy this weekend in your honor. Welcome home. Next, I heard from Paul Adamy. We went back and forth a little bit. Paul was very disappointed he couldn't be here today. He so much wanted to be. Um, some of us that know Paul uh, as a bass player he was playing in New York. He was the Mamma Mia bass player. I was there with, actually with a high school trip with my students that opened the program and saw his name listed in the orchestra. Uh, that he played that show for 12 years, he told me. Uh, after it closed, he did play another show, and presently he said he's in Sweden doing some performing over there at this time, so he was unable to make it. So he sent a word to me that just said, uh, Congratulations, Neil, on a well-deserved day of recognition. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I want you to know that you made my time at UB very special. Today's reunion tribute honors the hard work and dedication you gave to create the great jazz program at UB. I'm so glad I was there to experience, experience it. I love you, man. Okay. It's funny, I got those two pictures. It looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? <laughs> I still plays bass in the exact same position. <laughs> All right, the next guy that I heard from was unable to make it today was Chris Coulter. So there's the young Chris back in his days at UB, and here's Chris today playing saxophone. Um, <clears throat> Chris has had a, a, a note here that says, Hi to all, and a special hi to Neil. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you folks today. Special thanks to Dr. Mark Vickers for setting up such a wonderful event and for working hard to breathe some life back into the hallowed halls, as they say. You know, it doesn't seem like that long ago, yet it seems like a real long time ago, especially when I hear recordings of things that I know I could have played better. In other words, if I knew then what I know now, haha, <laughs> and of course, when I see pictures, yikes. The thing I remember the most, and vividly to this day, is the spirit and camaraderie of the band and how much most of, all of us wanted to play as good as we possibly could for Neil and for each other. Neil had extraordinarily high expectations and had a way of making you, or may I say demanding, that you play beyond your capabilities. I remember that most all of us wanted to live up to those high expectations. For me, it was nothing better than to finish a solo and have Neil look over at you and say, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Playing in that band with all those young, terrific musicians, many of whom, as we know, went on to become wonderful professional musicians as well as music teachers in their own right was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. And it certainly was due in large part to the teaching and coaching of Neil Slater. Thank you, Neil, for providing the opportunity and thrills to having played and sold on stage with immortal jazz artists like Clark Terry, Jerry Mulligan, Bob Brookmeyer, Slide Hampton, and more. I, it all instilled in me a tremendous lifetime love and respect for the history of the music, what it took, and what it takes to play it all and play it well. I keep working at it in my teaching and in my playing. But you know something? I never, ever played giant steps that fast again after we <laughs> recorded it and probably never will. Uh -huh. My very best in hugs to all, Chris. So Chris actually was nice enough to send me a few photos uh, we could take a quick look at um, of his, some of these performances with the band. Uh, Slide Hampton, I believe. Thank you. I like the two guys up front in the middle. By the way, John Mastriani will be here later. His son had a baseball game, so he said, hold on, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> and I know Janice is going to be with us at some point today if she's not already. If I haven't seen her, but she's planning on being here this afternoon. Do you remember the guitarist? 
Oh, Janice is back there. Hello, Janice. <laughs> we have a We've been emailing that tonight. Just shows you how fast that went. Your <laughs> gold child really flies. Uh, and Chris and I said, which solos to use? Because there was two tenor solos listed. He goes, well, I'm the first one, but please don't play it. He said, I go back and I hear that recording. I don't like my articulations. I don't. He's got it. <laughs> and so it's captured. And I said, well, that's the way it is. But I honored his request. All right. The next guy I like, we heard from, I heard from, and been going back and forth with quite a bit is Joe Curiel. You know, but so a lot of us remember Joe, the trumpet player on the left, and this is Joe today. A recent, actually recent photo that I just saw on his Facebook. Um, he really regrets not being here and wanted to say hi in a big way. Um, but he just recently completed his doctoral degree. Uh, he's been doing a lot of composing and performing with his music. Uh, I saw some clips that he was doing in Czechoslovakia. And he's somewhere in Asia right now, he said, so he wouldn't be here. Um, but gave me actually a little bit lengthy, but I think you'll enjoy it, a uh, letter to read. So he wrote, Professor Slater, fellow classmates and alumni. I wish I could be with all of you to pay my respect and tribute to Professor Neil Slater. It is certainly due and well deserved. To be very honest, academically speaking, studying with Neil and being around him and learning from him made my four years of university completely worth the time and effort. He was a rare educator and his approach was exactly what I needed at a very critical crossroad in my life, in the beginning stages of my professional development. There was a Chinese saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. He did, and I'm grateful. I can draw many metaphors from Eastern philosophy, which aptly, uh, which apply perfectly to Professor Slater. In my experience, Neil said few words, but what he did say had meaning and power for me. While reading the book, The Dancing Wu Li Masters, I had an epiphany about my student-teacher relationship with Professor Slater. The author stated, a master teaches essence. When the essence is perceived, he teaches what is necessary to expand the perception. In this way, the Wu Li master dances with his student. The Wu Li master does not teach, but the student learns. This was exactly my experience with Professor Slater, and it was inadvertently confirmed by him when he wrote and told me after more than 25 years of having had no contact, I didn't teach you anything. And my reply was, but I learned a lot from you. And I think we can all say that. Um, the Chinese spiritual teacher and philosopher, La Tzu, writer of the ancient spiritual and philosophical text, the Tai De Ching, said, govern a nation like you would cook a small fish. The basic translation into the jazz vernacular might be, don't mess with it too much or you'll screw it up. With his jazz band serving as his nation, Professor Slater offered a lot of freedom of expression to each musician, giving us room to explore and experiment within the inspiring framework he created in an effort to help us to better find ourselves in our own unique voices. That kind of freedom could only have been afforded by someone very evolved, someone very wise, and someone with the kind of confidence and self-assuredness found only in the greatest leaders. <coughs> Later in life, after having achieved so many of the dreams I had when I was a student, I came to value and identified Professor Slater as one of my greatest gurus, my Shun, I'm not sure it's a his master, if I may, and I, his disciple. Through an element of humor, though an element of humor can be found in that statement, it is nevertheless a profound truth. Now after having recently earned a PhD and setting out to share my professional and life experiences with my own students, Neil serves you yet again as a role model for an approach to teaching that I hope will serve my students as well as it has served me, though he instructed me that only those who are ready will understand and the rest will not. Galileo stated, you cannot teach a young man, a man anything. You can only help him find it within himself. Thank you, Professor Slater, for helping me to find it in myself, what I needed in life that has provided me with a fulfilling, rewarding, and exciting life beyond my greatest dreams and still continues. You will always be a part of my life, and your legacy lives on through the music I write and through my students' achievements. I'm not ashamed to say I love you from the bottom of my heart, and I wish you only the very best on your own continuing journey. Thank you for everything. Colors Man. Ciao.
I have to tell you a quick story about Joe, too. He was such a great guy. I was taking my brass classes with Bob Myers, uh, another great teacher we had. And uh, I, I was really struggling with the trumpet. And I said to Joe, can you give me a little help on this? And so he said, OK. So we went over uh, to Wisteria. I remember took a room. I played, but he kept trying to give me all these different tips. And he finally said, I don't think you're cut off for the trumpet, Mark. <laughs> so, I think you were. So next, uh, the tributes come again from, uh, from some more students. This one, Fred Victor. You can see young Fred playing in the alto section over there. Fred playing today with Average White Band. Um, I know he's been part of that group for probably close to 20 years. Whenever I go out to see him, um, he's there and, and re really playing up a storm. He really sent his regrets that he couldn't be here today. We really, I've been working with him all for months now. A lot of it relied on where he was with the band. They just uh, toured through Hawaii with Average White Band. He said, I just got home. I just talked to him the other day. He said, I, I've got to rest this weekend because we're going back on tour again next week. So he will be here in Connecticut. I saw he's playing in Hartford and uh, up in Norfolk at Infinity Hall in November. So you can always uh, run into him there. Uh, but he had some words to say. So we will let Fred do his own talking. Hey everybody, sorry I couldn't get up there from Atlanta this weekend to see you all, but I just couldn't make it happen. I'm sure you're all devastated. I can't believe it's been 35 years since I've seen most of you. I have a lot of memories of my time at the A&H building, most of it hanging out in that second floor hallway avoiding practicing. Something you might recall that I enjoyed it so much on the second floor that I actually lived there for a while. So I want to say hello and thanks to my landlord, Neil Slater, who graciously allowed me to live in his office until he found out that I was living in his office. I think I first became aware of Neil when he was adjudicating at a festival in New Hampshire where my high school jazz band was performing. Then I got to actually meet him at one of the Stan Kenton summer camps where he was one of the clinicians. Neil was the reason I came to UB in 76, and he left the year after I did, so I'd like to think that I was the reason he stayed. <laughs> Playing in his jazz ensemble was definitely one of the most enjoyable and beneficial experiences of my time at UB, and it's where I realized how much more I had to learn. I can trace where I am today in my career, such as it is, right back to the musicians that I connected with during my time there some of whom I'm still friends with 35 years later. So thanks, Neil, for helping to place me on that path. It's nice to have someone to blame besides my parents for where I ended up. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and have a great weekend. Uh, one of our other star musicians that came from the program that obviously went on to international success, uh, Dave Weckl. See young Dave over there on the left. Here's a shot of Dave playing today. Um, incredibly musician. And I just remember when he was here at UB in my days, I was just so fortunate uh, to hear him play. And we used to go to see the big band and all our eyes kind of just drifted to the drum set and see what he was going to do next. I used to really have fun with him because he used to play mallets and I'd play some jazz piano at the bottom of the keyboard and he'd come up with two fingers like this and be playing and improvising to me because he wasn't really a pianist. But a great musician. We you know his, his story, discovered by Paul Simon, went on the road now with Chick Corea and really, really wanted to come. I've talked to him several times now. Um, but he's been playing with the electric band. He did that starting in the 1980s with Chick Corea. Um, Chick just announced his 75th birthday tour and uh, it's kicked it off with the electric band. So actually Dave played last night in uh, South Carolina and is on a bus on his way up to Boston where he's playing tonight. And I wanted to make sure that I let everybody know that he'll be in Manhattan playing at the Blue Note with Chick uh, this, this coming week. He start, opens on Wednesday and he's there through Sunday. So he said, please do come by. I'm gonna show this video and I asked him to give a little shout out. He said, sure, he says, but please, don't let this go anywhere else outside that room. Um, he's really tired. He says, I look like hell. <laughs> and he says, he's been doing a lot of traveling and stuff. He says, but I really, Neil means so much to me. I'd like to say a few words. So here, here's Dave. Hey, everybody. Dave Weckl here. How you doing? I hope everybody's doing great. I'm sure you are. Today is a special day. And um, 
Just wanted to record a short video to say how sorry I am I can't be there in person, but I'm certainly there in spirit, and um, I think as you're watching this, I'm probably asleep on a bus somewhere between South Carolina and Boston. Uh, with Chick and the guys, we're, uh, we're on tour with the Electric Band Reunion, a little bit, little bit of fun with the guys again, and um, you know, like I said, I only wish I could be there, if I, if I could have, I would have been. <coughs> And um, just wanted to especially give a special shout out and hello to Neil Slater and uh, a big thank you for everything you did for me personally and for all of us there at Bridgeport back in the day with the big band and the program. It was just for me the beginning of everything, the beginning of my serious study, my practicing, and, and my career, really. And, uh, you know, I miss, I miss hanging with you and playing with you, and, and uh, we had some great times in, in the school and all the gigs we did, and it was just a uh, really incredible time for me. So you were a big part of all of it, all of my beginning, and, um, you know, just, again, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we can catch up on FaceTime or Skype or something like that soon. All right, everybody have a great time there. Once again, sorry I can't be there personally, but um, again, there in spirit. All right. Come see us if you can. We're in New York next week, 19 through 23 at the Blue Mountain with the electric band. And uh, if not, we'll see you somewhere down the road. All right, have a good one. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>
in college and why are certain musics not taught. So we hope to honor Professor Slater's legacy of innovation. The students that are here are so much like you. Uh, you'll meet a couple of them later today in the jam session, I hope. And you had wonderful opportunities here. Thanks to each other, thanks to wonderful teachers, thanks to generous people that made the opportunities possible. People like Arnold Bernhard, Andre and Clara Mertens, the Carlson family that supported all the visiting composers that were here. I hope you'll think about what you can do to help make things possible for the next generation of music students here as we take the program forward into the 21st century. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Johnson, Dr. Vickers, President Salonina, and Professor Slater. We have a plaque for Professor Slater today, honoring his achievements here. I'll just talk longer while the screen goes up. We have a plaque here for Professor Slater, honoring his achievements during his 10 years on the UB faculty. We are awarding him one plaque. The second plaque will be displayed prominently at the entrance to the music department on the third floor of the Arnold Bernhardt Center. One thing you noticed was that um, he spells Neil correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's enjoy each other's company for a little while longer before we head downstairs and start making music.